thank you all for showing up and sorry about the itty bitty snafu with the audio. My name is Jennifer Shale. I am the Residential Loan Officer with Central Bank and Trust in the Riverton branch. Today we are going to do a webinar uh, about frequently asked questions and how to pre-qualify for a home loan. Um, before we begin, please make sure that you have downloaded all of the information. Um, there's a terminology sheet, some frequently asked questions, and a blank budget. Um, I will try my best to um, not use a bunch of the terminology, but uh, um, if you have that sheet in front of you, that will definitely help. Again, welcome. So we're just going to talk about frequently asked questions and um, what it takes to pre-qualify for a home loan. So the major things that we look at when we're trying to pre-qualify someone for a home loan is first your credit history and your scores, and the second major thing is your debt to income ratio. Your debt to income ratio um, if you look at the terminology sheet, is your monthly amounts owed on the liabilities on your credit report plus your new proposed housing payment, and we take that and divide it by your gross monthly income, um, and that will give us your debt to income ratio. So in order to pre-qualify, you need to fill out an application. Um, if you're sent home with an application, fill it out to the best of your ability. I know if, if you've not done that before, it may look a little bit confusing and, and a little maybe uh, overwhelming. Fill it out to the best of your ability. Um, if you're not able to do that, if you can schedule with your loan officer, they can sometimes help you um, get that done as well. Um, some other documentation that um, we don't necessarily require, but the more information you can get us, the more accurate our pre-qualification will be, is the signed authorization to be able to pull your credit and verify your information, your most recent 30 days worth of pay stubs, your most recent two years of federal tax returns, including all schedules. So let's say you're like me and I run a Sensi business on the side. I would have a Schedule C that showed any income or loss from that business. So I would need to include that Schedule C and any W-2s. The fourth thing we look for is your most recent 60 days worth of bank statements, um, your driver's license and social security card or your passport just to verify your identity. And um, if you happen to know the approximate amount of mortgage that you're looking to pre-qualify, you can bring that as well. If not, we can play with the numbers and, and figure out how much we can get you pre-qualified for. So once we get your application and input it into our system, the second thing we do is pull your credit report. For a residential mortgage, you are, we are required to pull what's called a tri-merge report. So that's a, a credit report from all three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Um, other credit reports that you pull, let's say you go to freecreditreport.com and check up on your credit um, on a regular basis, those credit scores that you may receive from other um, credit reports will not generally match the credit report that we pull because they look at different indicators. And generally, most lenders will not give you a copy of your report. I prefer to sit down and go over your credit report with you. That way, if maybe you have some collections or some derogatory credit, um, we can help you to get those things cleaned up. And maybe if you're not pre-qualified now, we can get you pre-qualified in the future. One side note, I am in no way, shape, or form a credit counselor, but I've been in the business seven or eight years now, so I know some of the things that we can do to help you get your credit cleaned up. So. If your score is above the minimum and you don't have any outstanding collections or judgments, we move forward to your debt to income ratio section of the pre-qualification process. So again, your debt to income ratio is all of the liabilities that show on your credit report, the, the monthly payments for those liabilities, plus the new proposed housing payment, and we usually include your 
homeowner's insurance and your property taxes in that new proposed payment, and we divide that by your gross monthly income. As long as that ratio is 41 or less, um, you should be within guidelines. And sometimes if it's 42.4, we can do things to get your debt to income ratio in line to make sure that we can qualify you. So if your credit scores and DTI are acceptable, then you are pre-qualified. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind as well, um, if, if you don't have a budget in place, um, I, I recommend for first-time home buyers, personally, I recommend for first-time home buyers that you have a budget in place. Because a lot of times, you can be pre-qualified for way more uh, of a house payment than you're comfortable. So that's why we included a, a blank budget as part of the documentation. And one other thing, your debt to income ratio doesn't include utilities on the new house or any auto insurance that you currently have for automobiles, those sorts of things. Um, so your debt to income ratio doesn't take into, include, take into account all of your debts. So now we go along to our frequently asked questions. How long after I'm pre-qualified will it take me to buy a house? Well, it entirely depends. <laughs> sometimes you can be pre-qualified, or sometimes you can be under contract before you're pre-qualified. Um, and it kind of depends on if your financial status has changed. Um, in my personal case, um, it took me a year um, after I was pre-qualified to find my perfect house. So it just kind of depends. Um, it, I always encourage you to keep in touch with your loan officer to advise them if anything in your financial status has changed or, you know, um, a lot of the documents um, that we use to verify your information have time limits on them. Uh, for example, a credit report is only good for 90 days. So if we've pulled a credit report for you two and a half months ago, and you're thinking about, you know, you finally found the house, chances are we'll have to pull another credit report before the final loan is done. Um, how long is my pre-qualification good for? Again, this is a big, depends. <laughs> um, if anything in your financial status or your credit changes, um, we will probably have to pre-qualify you again. Again, in my situation, um, I got pre-qualified initially, and then you know, a year later, I found my perfect house, and they had to rerun my credit report to make sure that nothing had changed. And, and in the meantime, I had gotten a, an increase in pay, so I was able to um, qualify for a larger house payment than I had originally been qualified for. So what are some typical closing costs and prepaids for a new home? What's, what's typical for um, money that you have to bring to the closing table? Um, if you take a look at your terminology sheet um, down towards the bottom, we talk about the closing costs and the prepaids. Um, a large part of the money you would have to bring to closing is the prepaids. It's what we use to set up your escrow account. Escrow accounts are not required to be set up when you do a loan to get a interest rate you set up an escrow account. And that way you're not scrambling at the end of the year when your taxes come due to come up with a large lump sum. So generally, when we're talking about closing costs, those are um, what we charge to verify your income and your assets and to pull your credit report and verify that you're not in a flood zone, um, a, lot of, a lot of very specific things. Generally, 3.5% of the purchase price will cover your closing costs and prepaids. Um, there are some times that um, you can get written into the contract, the purchase contract, that the seller will pay your closing costs. And in those cases, I generally say 3.5% um, of the purchase price will cover that. Again, if you have any questions of your own during this time, please feel free to write them in the question box and I will answer them um, in just a little bit here. So how much of a down payment will I need to buy a house? 
that entirely depends on the type of loan we're looking for. Um, generally, the least amount you will have to put down um, for a rural development is zero dollars. <laughs> you always have your um, escrow, of course, or your um, earnest money check, I'm sorry, that um, is required as kind of a, a hold this property for me, I am very interested, that goes with your contract. But as far as down payment for the, the purchase of the house with rural development, you don't necessarily have to have any. Um, the next lowest would be for a first time home buyer, 3% for a conventional loan. Um, FHA loans require 3.5%. And any loan that you don't have 20% down, you will be required to pay some sort of mortgage insurance. And mortgage insurance, my my layman's terms um, definition of mortgage insurance is insurance that you pay to ensure that you're not going to default on your loan. <laughs> um, on to the next question, how long do I need to be at my current job? Usually we like to see two years of employment in the same line of work. So let's say you just graduated from college um, with a nursing degree and just started at let's say the hospital a month ago. As long as we have 30 days worth of pay stubs and can verify using transcripts or some other sort of verification, we can count your schooling as part of your um, training, as your two years in that line of work. Um, how is my interest rate determined? Um, it is. Um, a lot of things are factored into your interest rate. Um, your loan to value, how much, um, if, if you have 20% down, um, your interest rate can be better. If you have great credit scores, usually anything above a 720, um, you'll get the best interest rate. Um, your debt to income also um, affects your interest rate. If you have a very low debt to income, you have a lot of extra income left over after your housing payments and your other liabilities, your interest rate um, could be better. Um, and I guess that's it for my presentation. I will go to some questions. First question, is it advantageous to wait and save for a large down payment or to simply go with mortgage insurance and buy a house now? It entirely depends on, um, well, it's, it's, you'll have a um, cheaper payment generally if you have the 20% down. Um, because if you don't have the 20% down like we talked about, you will have mortgage insurance. And um, depending on the size of the loan, um, mortgage insurance can be a very hefty part of your monthly payment. Um, for example, I had a loan that I'm working on right now. Um, this particular borrower doesn't have very good credit scores and they're only putting 5% down. And I believe the loan amount is around probably $180. And um, the other kicker is it's a manufactured home and his monthly mortgage insurance is close to $250 a month. And it will stay that way until he pays the loan down to that, um, to have that 80% loan to value. Um, does DTI use pre-tax or after-tax? It's pre-tax. So it's your, your gross income. Let's see, is it possible to get a copy of the credit report used in these credit decisions without a hard inquiry? Unfortunately, no. Um, you can, um, it's always advisable to make sure that you check your credit um, just to make sure that um, there are no collections that are not yours, no um, inaccurate information on your credit report. But all of our credit reports that we pull um, are a hard hit. So it does, it, it can affect your credit score. Ooh, can I explain jumbo loans? Jumbo loans are loans um, above 417%. 
generally, um, I, actually I believe for all jumbo loans, you have to have a minimum credit score of 680 and 20% down to be able to do jumbo loans. That, that may not be completely accurate, but um, that's from, I, I, I actually, I've only, I'm in the process of doing one jumbo loan right now, and that's not something I've come in, um, um, had to deal with. Next question, what do I need, do I need to wait until my Roth IRA is five years old to use the balance to buy a house? Um, <laughs> that would be a question for your financial advisor. That's not something that, that I can answer when it comes to um, investments. Can you have a co-borrower that is not a spouse? Yes, you can have a co-borrower that is not a spouse, but generally the reason you would have a co-borrower is to help with your low credit scores or your low debt to income ratio. But just because you have a co-borrower doesn't mean that they ignore your credit scores or your debt to income ratio. Um, for all of these questions, I would encourage you to definitely um, talk one-on-one -on -one with a residential loan officer and um, give them your information, more accurate information, and they'll be able to give you more personalized answers. Are there any more questions that you can type into the question box? If not, it looks like we are about done with this webinar. So um, as you can see, the last slide that's up there, um, if you go to centralbanktrust.com, backslash home, that's where you will find the terminology page, the FAQ page, and the budget, the blank budget that you can use. Um, and you can reach out to any of the lenders at any of our central bank and trust locations. We have locations in Cheyenne, Thermopolis, Lander, Riverton, um, and you can give any of us a call if we're in the office, we'd love to talk to you. Thank you so very much for attending the webinar and have a wonderful afternoon.